Good afternoon or morning. And so let's take a look into how to solve a right triangle. So our two learning targets today are to calculate angle measures from trigonometric ratios. So we're going to be finding angles, where in our last video we found sides. And then we're going to solve right triangles. So we're going to figure out every side and every angle of every triangle, which is going to be a lot of work, okay? So Let's take a look at this intro question. So it says, in a right triangle ABC with acute angle A. So what that tells me is if I were to draw a right triangle, um, an acute angle has to be A, okay? So it can either be the top one or it can be the bottom one. You kind of get to pick, okay? So here would be a possible right triangle. So it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna say ABC. So as long as A was an acute angle, okay? So we know that sine of A is the square root of 3 over 2. And so we know in our previous lessons that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the square root of 3 is going to go on the opposite side of A. So here's angle A. Opposite of that would be BC. So the square root of 3 is going to be at the base of our triangle. Okay. Now... The denominator is a 2, which matches up with our hypotenuse, so I know this side over here is 2, the hypotenuse, okay? So the only thing that we really know how to find in this triangle is the length of AB, okay? Because if I know two sides of a right triangle, I can find the third one from doing the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So let's take a look at this problem real quick to see if we can find AB. So I'm going to go ahead and label this X. So my Pythagorean theorem tells me that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a and b, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to say my a is my x. So x squared plus the square root of 3 squared equals 2 squared. Okay, and it's okay that there's a little radical in our problem. We're still going to treat it like we would. So I'm going to subtract the square root of 3 squared. Subtract the square root of 3 squared. Okay, now let's take a look at how to type this in the calculator because we haven't dealt with radicals a ton. So, on your calculator, wow, there it is, okay. I'm going to type a 2 squared in first and then subtract. And then I need to get the square root symbol, so second x squared of a 3. Now, I do have to hit the right arrow to get out of the square root to do the exponent of a 2, okay? So that's how you would type that in the calculator if you have a square root and a radical. The answer is 1. So I would have x squared equals 1, and then I would square root both sides, and the square root of 1 is 1, or we could type it in to prove it. So square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so I now know the length of AB is 1. Okay, so up until this point, that is kind of all we were able to do um, with this problem. Okay, but what we're going to learn today is how to find angle A and find angle C, because then that would completely solve the triangle for us. I would know all the sides and I would know all the angles. Okay, so let's take a look at how to find the angles. So in item number one, we're given the sine of an acute angle A and are asked to find the angle whose sine is equal to that ratio. So in other words, we're finding the inverse sine function. So remember how adding and subtracting are inverses, multiplying and dividing are inverses, um, squares and square roots are inverses here and here. Well, we're going to learn a new one, and so it's called inverse sine, an inverse cosine and inverse tangent. So it's written as sine with an exponent of a negative 1. So if you take a look on your calculator, on the sine button, okay, above it in blue, which is just like how the inverse was for the squared and the squared, you have sine negative 1, cosine negative 1 in blue, tan negative 1 in blue. So inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tan, okay? So... Again, sine negative 1 of x is read as the inverse of sine, inverse sine of x, okay? So, let me say this one more time. <laughs> we have a nice table here, okay? So the inverse 
trigonometric functions for sine, cosine, and tangent are as follows. So if I have sine of a is equal to x, then the inverse sine of x is equal to the measure of a. If I have cosine of a equal x, which is some number, then in the inverse of cosine, the inverse cosine of x is angle a. If I have tangent of a is x, then the inverse tan of x will give you the measurement of angle a. Okay, so basically the inverse of something will give you an angle, which is what I'm trying to find. Okay, so that sounds very confusing, but I promise it's not. It's actually pretty cool because your calculator does all the work for you. So I'm going to use a scientific or graphing calculator to evaluate the falling to the nearest tenth, so one decimal place, and I'm going to make sure my calculator is in degree mode. So again, if I go to mode, I could be doing this all wrong because my calculator is not in degree. So I'm going to go down, go right, hit enter, it's in degree. Okay, so again, that's in mode. So now I can get out of that by quitting out of it, and then we're just going to type this in the calculator. So to get the inverse sign to come up, you're going to hit the blue button and then the sign button. Okay, so its inverse is located right above it, which is nice. We can type in a half, so you can do a fraction or you can just do one divided by two, and that is 30 degrees because I found an angle. Okay, so the inverse sign of a half is 30 degrees. Okay, let's try, I'm going to do the left side and y'all can do the right side. So I'm going to do second tan to get inverse tan. Let's do a half again. Okay, so this one wants me to round to the nearest tenth, so one decimal place, so 26.6, because that will round up. So 26.6 degrees, we're finding an angle. Last but not least, cosine. So second cosine, inverse cosine, three-fourths. 41.4, 41.4 degrees, okay? So that is how you type in the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tan into the calculator. So y'all try B, D, and F, and then we'll talk about it. So press pause and try those. All right, so you should have gotten 60 degrees, 48.6 degrees, and 36.9 degrees. If you have any questions on rounding or how to type that in the calculator, please let me know. But make sure that you didn't just do, for example, cosine of a half. Make sure you actually typed in the inverse cosine, so second cosine. Okay? All right, let me know if you have any questions on how to find an angle in the calculator. Okay? But using known measures to find all the remaining unknown measures is called a, is known as solving a right triangle. So that's what we're about to do. Get ready. Okay, so Trisha is designing the logo shown for one of her clients. She needs to know all the missing dimensions and angle measures of the logo. So I'm going to use an inverse trigonometric function to find the measure of angle Q. Okay, so... Again, this is kind of like the one we did at the beginning of the lesson. I have a side. I have a side. The really only thing I can find is the third side. But now I'm going to teach you how to find an angle. Okay? So I'm going to mark angle Q. I'm always going to label my triangle based off what I know. So this 65 over here is opposite of angle Q. The hypotenuse is over here by itself where I know nothing about it. And that means this 33 is the adjacent side. Okay? So now I'm going to ask myself what trig function deals with a 33 and a 65, which is an O and an A. So OA is tan. Okay? So I'm going to write tan. When I wrote my trig function, the angle always comes with it. And so in this case, I'm looking for angle Q. So I'm going to say tangent of Q. Okay? Equals. Now, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So my opposite side is 65. My adjacent side is 33. Okay, so I set it up like we did with our side, except now I've got two numbers over here and I don't know what is in parentheses. Okay, so now 
in an equation, I'm trying to isolate my variable. I'm trying to get it by itself. I just figured out that the inverse tan will get rid of tan, okay? So kind of like adding and subtracting are opposites. I want to get rid of tan, so I'm going to do tan negative 1. So inverse tan, if you do it to one side, do it to the other side. Inverse tan, okay? A tan and an inverse tan will cancel each other out, leaving me with Q, which is my angle. And then how you write all this together, the trig function comes first. So tan inverse parentheses, and you just put that fraction in the parentheses. So 65 over 33. And that's what you would type in the calculator. Okay. So again, you set it up like you do a, saw, a side problem, but you'll have an angle in the parentheses. You'll do the inverse tan to both sides. And then you just have to type all this lovely jazz in the calculator. This is how you fancily write it out. So let's do this together. So in my calculator, I'm going to hit inverse tan, so second tangent. Parentheses opens up for me. I'm going to do 65 over 33, close it, and that's my answer. Okay. Um, doesn't really tell me what to round to, so we'll round to the nearest tenth. So it's going to be 63.1. So I just found the measure of angle Q. So the measure of angle Q is going to be, I already forgot that number, 63.1 degrees because I found an angle. Okay? Cool. So now you know how to find an angle. All right. So now I know angle Q is 63.1. Now, there are two ways to find the measure of angle R without finding the length of the hypotenuse. So I really don't care about this hypotenuse. I can still find the measure of angle R. Now the two methods, I'm going to do the hard one first and then talk about the easy one later. So here's angle R. So now I'm going to label my triangle based off me being at angle R. So if I'm at angle R, 33 is the opposite side. And now 65 is my adjacent side. So my opposite and my adjacent flipped because my angle has flipped. So O and A is still tangent. Okay. So I'm going to write tangent. I'm looking for angle R. And I know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 33 over 65. Okay. So now if I want to get rid of tangent, I'm going to do the inverse tan. So inverse tan here, if I do it to one side, do it to the other side. And then I just have to type this in the calculator, which I should type the trig function first. So inverse tan of 33 over 65. And that'll give me my answer. So let's do that. Inverse tan, 33 over 65. So that gives me 26.9 degrees. So 20. 6.9 degrees is angle R. Okay? Now, that is the long way of doing this problem because I already found out in my previous problem that this top angle is 63.1. I know I have a right angle. And so back to module 3 about triangles, I know triangles have to add up to 180. So 180, take away my 90. Take away my angle I just found, 63.1. That'll give you what's left, which is all that. So I really did too much work because I can just take these two angles away from 180. Another shortcut is if you know this top angle is 63.1, we already found that Q and R are complementary or they have to add up to 90. So another way of doing it is 90 take away. 63.1. You'll still get the same answer of 20, not 26.9. Okay? So that is how you find the angles of a triangle. So I found all of the insides of my triangle. Okay? So I'm almost done solving my right triangle, but I just need to figure out the hypotenuse. Okay? So there are two ways to find the length of the hypotenuse. Okay? I'm going to do my favorite way, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I'm going to erase this right now. So if you know two sides of a triangle and you're trying to find the third, do the Pythagorean theorem. 
super fast. So I'm going to say these are my legs. So 33 squared plus, is it 65 squared equals C squared, which will help us get our hypotenuse. So 33 squared plus 65 squared is equal to 5,314. Square root my final answer. And so the answer would be 72.9. What are my units? Millimeters? Millimeters. Okay, so now you found the length of the hypotenuse and you have found all the sides and all the angles and we have completely solved that right triangle. Okay, there's another way to figure out the hypotenuse both sides of Pythagorean theorem. So you can use any angle that we found in our previous problem. So let's say I'm going to use angle R. Okay, I found in my previous problem that R was 26.9. Okay, so I can use trig to find the hypotenuse. Okay, and you kind of get to pick which number you want to use. Do you want to use the opposite or do you want to use the adjacent? Let's use the opposite. So if I know the opposite and the hypotenuse, that is my sine. So I can say sine of my angle, so sine of 26.9 is equal to my opposite sine, 33, over your hypotenuse, which we're trying to find is x. Okay? If x is down low, x and the angle will switch, you know. So 33 over sine of 26.9. Okay? If I type that in the calculator, I should get the exact same answer I got over here doing the Pythagorean theorem. So let's make sure I'm right. 33 divided by sine 26.9. Boom! We got the same thing. Okay? So that's what's cool about solving a right triangle is you get to pick which way you want to do. If you want to use fault, if you want to solve for a side using trig, go for it. If you love the Pythagorean theorem, go for it. It's up to you. Okay. So that is how you solve a right triangle, and that is how you find a missing angle, the inverse of a trig. Okay. So yes, that is a whole lot of work. It's like ten minutes to do one problem. Okay. But you guys can do it. I know it. So what I want you to do right now is try number six, seven, and eight, okay? So six wants to know what's the minimal amount of information that you need to solve a triangle. Seven is a little tricky, but see if you can tell me the difference between these two and how they're related. And then number eight wants you to find the angle measurements. So you're gonna be doing the inverses and typing them in the calculator, okay? So try six, seven, and eight, press pause, and we'll go over our answers. All right, number six, the minimal amount of information needed. There are two examples. So one is if you know two side lengths, you are able to completely find everything, okay? So if you know two sides, you can find the third one using the Pythagorean theorem. And then I can do my inverse trig to find the angles, okay? The other equation is, or the other example, is when you have one side and one of the acute angles because we're already given the 90. So if you know an angle and one of the sides, then you can find out everything. Okay? That's all you need. All right. Explain the difference between the two expressions. How are they related? So they are inverse operations of each other. So sine of 15 degrees is equal to this decimal, and the inverse of that decimal is equal to my 15 degrees. So they are inverses of each other. Okay? And then on number eight, you just typed all these in the calculator. And so you would have typed in cosine inverse, negative one of that number, and you should have gotten 53.8 degrees. For B, you should have got 75 degrees. C was 60.5 degrees, 10.2 degrees, 88.9 degrees, and 71.8 degrees. Okay, so you just had to type in the negative one, the inverse of all those numbers into the calculator. Let me know if you have any questions on that one. Otherwise, we're going to move on to our last problems. 
which is going to take a while. So I want you to solve each right triangle if possible. So tell me all of the missing sides. So for an angles. So for example, on A, to solve this right triangle, I know angle C, I know angle B, you're going to have to figure out angle A. Okay? So I have to find angle A. Then I also have to find my two sides. So you're going to have to find AC, and then you're going to have to find BC. Okay? So that is what it wants you to do on A, B, C, and D. Okay? So if it is possible, solve these triangles. For some of them, it's not possible to solve them. Okay? All right. So try 9 through 10 on your own, and then we will talk about all the lovely answers. Good luck. Press box. All right, here are our answers. So for angle A, I just did 180, take away 90, take away 49 to give you 41 to add up to 180 for a triangle. Okay, so that one wasn't too bad. And then I used trig to find one of the sides, because you can't do the Pythagorean theorem unless you know two sides. So I used my angle 49 and did opposite over hypotenuse to get 20.4 for this AC length right here. And then you could have done the Pythagorean theorem at this point, but I just decided, hey, let's keep going with trig. So to find this base bottom, I put a variable of y, and that would be your adjacent in your hypotenuse. And so cosine 49, y over 27 gives you 17.7, okay? On part B, it is not possible to solve that triangle because I was not given two sides or I wasn't given a side in general. So if they don't give you a side, you cannot solve it, okay? Angles, cool, can't solve for any sides. All right, last but not least, by the way, if you got these answers, please skip on. Okay, so part C, they gave you two sides, so I went ahead and found the third side by doing the Pythagorean theorem to get 17.5 for my hypotenuse, okay? And then to find an angle in my triangle, you had to set up a trig ratio. I decided to find angle E first, and so I knew my opposite was 9, my adjacent was 15, so opposite and adjacent is tangent. Tangent of x, you could put angle E in here as well, equals 9 over 15. So you would do the inverse tan of 9 over 15 to get 31 degrees. Okay, You could do trig again, but again, if you know one of the angles, you know these two have to be complementary because they're both acute. So you could say 90 minus 31 to get the 59, or you can say 180 minus the 90 degree angle minus the 31 to get your missing so third angle, okay? On D over here, I got R was 22 degrees because if Q was 68, 90 minus 68 is 22. To find my side lengths, let's see, I think I did X first. So 68, 58 is opposite. Hypotenuse is over here, and then the adjacent side is QS. So I found the adjacent side first, opposite adjacent tangent to get 23.4, and then I chose to do the Pythagorean theorem to show you guys a different way of doing it. So if I found that QS was 23.4, I did the Pythagorean theorem of 23.4 squared plus 58 squared equals C squared to get you this hypotenuse of QR. You could have done trig again using sine, it's up to you, okay? All right, please let me know if you have any questions on that. I know you can do these problems other ways other than what I did and still be correct. So if you want me to check that work, please let me know. Last but not least, we kind of talked about this in a previous lesson. So anytime you're getting the ratio of a 1, that means you've got a number divided by a number. So like 7 divided by 7, 3 divided by 3, 2 divided by 2. That's the only way to get you a ratio of a 1. So they have to be the same number on top and bottom. Um, we know tangent stands for opposite and adjacent, and so the only way for these two, the opposite and the adjacent side, which is not the hypotenuse side, to be the same is when it's isosceles. So you're talking about an isosceles triangle, and in an isosceles triangle, if it's a right triangle, I know these two angles have to be 45, 
because they have to be the same and they have to be complementary. So the only two numbers that are the same that add up to 90 are 45 and 45. Okay? That was kind of a tricky one, but a cool brain activity. Okay? All right. Let me know if you have any questions on how to solve a right triangle or how to find an angle using an inverse. Okay? Otherwise, thank you for watching. Have fun practicing. Let me know if you have any questions.